That's your phone, man. How is dare his phone, they? Has his phone on right now. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah, man. Enjoy this. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, where are you from, John? So, uh, originally, I like, grew up in Southern California, pretty much. I lived all over the South Bay. Um, but I was born in Missouri, so I have that, uh, what do you say, like country boy at heart that trying to exploit, you know, growing up in the South Bay. Um, but yeah, after that, I've lived a lot of places. Yeah, what brought you here? What brought me to Iowa? Well, so going back, you know, I said I was, uh, I was born in Missouri, um, but my parents, they split up when I was an infant. And um, so my father, he lives still in Missouri, and my mother moved out with me to California. So um, needless to say, I have family scattered throughout the Midwest that I grew up without. And it's, it has kind of been a, a feeling of, I guess like loss, but the unknown kind of loss, you know, just more of like an empty void, perhaps. So, yeah, I mean, I chose to come out here for school because mainly my family, you know, a family throughout the Midwest. And it just sounds interesting to experience the seasons because you don't get a lot of that in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think so far? <laughs> Negative 19 degrees was, was quite intense. I, I was not prepared for that yeah. at all with a negative 39 degree wind chill. I mean, yeah, my pillow froze in my back seat. <laughs> like, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> so how long, have, how long have you been in Ames? I've been here for four months now. Four months? Yeah. It's not a lot of time. No, uh, well I guess, Only no, I guess it's been Iowa. five months. It's been five months, I've been here for five months. So give me that one extra month. Yeah, I, dro <laughs> I drove out here from Seattle. Right, so. okay. So five months, not a lot of time, no. but new climate, yeah. new environment, yep. new people. What have you What have you learned about yourself so far during your time here? Hmm. I've learned that I could survive negative degrees. I didn't know I could do that before. But you know, um, being a little bit older myself, I'm 29 and going back to school has been kind of a struggle, just being around younger college students trying to complete their degree. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a growing experience. It's been one that I didn't expect. I didn't expect this to be such a young area, mm -hmm. but I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. Yeah, just, I've learned that, that I have resilience. I've learned that that no matter how hard things get, you know, there, there's always a way out of them. It's, it's funny, life is funny that way. You know, there's always a path out of the darkest times. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even remotely what you're looking for, but that's what I've learned. <laughs> how did you get into woodworking? Jeez, that's the, that's the question. Yeah, um, you know, ever since I was a, a little kid, I, I've had interest in building Legos and playing with blocks and doing all sorts of things like that. And um, my grandfather, he was my, my main male influence growing up and he had a workshop. And I think obviously something, something in him kind of planted that seed in my mind of like, this is a manly thing to do or this, this is, you know, something to do to be creative. Like everybody needs a hobby, right? I feel like that's so important in life. Like you, you have your relationships, you have your work, but then you also need something where it's an outlet for you to almost just wander off in and get lost in and find yourself almost in those moments. And um, I, I never had that, you know, growing up until I was, 23 when I discovered that I could build stuff like I, I never really had that and all my friends They would have surfing they would have you know playing guitar They would have doing all these different things, but for me it was you know I would do things here and there just dabbling but not committing to anything and then yeah, I found woodworking and 
yeah, it really, it really changed my life, you know, because I can stay out there in my shop for hours and just like make something like mindlessly, almost like an assembly line. And mm -hmm. yeah, it feels, feels great. It's my meditation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know if you have any thoughts on minimalism as a lifestyle and um, I guess how, how your hobby, since it's a hobby that requires a lot of tools and, and everything yeah. to, to maintain uh, and materials, um, you know, how does that? No, I mean, that's, that's a good question, right? I mean, because my hobby isn't something that necessarily you could look at as being like a minimalistic lifestyle. But at the same token, I mean, I'm learning to use these tools that don't necessarily have to be mo like monstrous, right? Like you can get by with, you know, like a hacksaw and, a, and an ax and, you know, a few other things and, and actually build some stuff out there in the woods, right? And there's guys that do this. It's pretty incredible. And I mean, eventually I want to get to that point where I could just like walk out there and just make something and live a week in the woods, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm not there, but my, my thoughts on minimalism is, it's, it's, I don't know. It's almost like a dream, right? I mean, it's not something that you think about in today's society at all. Not many people can do it. Not many people have the, the guts to do it, right? Cause we're so like, it's ingrained in us since we're kids that you know we have to get a job and you know buy a car buy a house and do all these things and just purchase things and and you know buy 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 own 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 and then yeah like what you, <laughs> then you just that walked into happy that. then that's, yeah, that's right. happiness right yeah that's what they tell you on tv man but yeah it just it sounds it sounds too good to be true i like it i love the idea and you know i I have this idea that after I graduate college that I just want to go hike the Appalachian Trail for like six months. Just do it because why not? And when will I ever get to do that again? Because I'm going to be locked into this corporate world <laughs> and it sucks, but I want that thing. And it's funny that, you know, everybody says that they want to do stuff like that because it's, it's, it's us, right? As human beings, it's kind of like, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on your channel, but it's kind of like what we evolved from, you know, in my mind, it's, it's just our nature to, to be almost nomadic, to, to be in a small tribe, to be in a small community, to, to be able to like pick up everything and run in a moment's notice. That's how it should be. It shouldn't just be like, ah, oh, crap, I gotta stay here for four years because I have a contract. It's unnatural. So that's my thought. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> right on. What's the big thing about American culture that kind of just gets to you, you know? Hmm. Do you disagree with? Well, I mean, I guess, I guess it kind of bleeds into that whole idea is that, um, you know, we're the keeping up with the Joneses. That's, that's the normal thing where it's almost this braggadocious thing where, Hey, like, I got the new car. I got the new this, I got the new that. And I was trying to one up each other. And you're missing the whole point of life, which is these personal connections to people. And it's like, it becomes about objects. It feels like there's so much consumerism here that, yeah, I don't know. It really bothers me a lot. <laughs> and like, I find myself a victim to that whole, that whole scene as well. You know, I, yeah. So who am I to really, sit here and judge that much. Like I'm totally in the system. I feel like that's a wayward way of answering it. But I mean, there, there's a lot of good in America too. I feel like, I feel like things have never been this good, right? You know, this is a very good time to be alive. And yeah, it looks in the media like everything has fallen apart. You know, the world's crumbling down, but I mean, come on, we're, we're super safe right now. We're so safe that we, yeah, we just have ridiculous groups rising up out of nowhere because they have nothing else to complain about because things are so good. Things are really good right now. But I feel like instead of complaining so much, we need to learn to appreciate things. What do you love most about America? What do I love most about America besides Donald Trump? <laughs> I don't know, I mean, it's like the greatest thing ever. I think that the 
best thing about America, honestly, is just the land that we have. We have so much land that is open and free and it's everybody's, it's public, you know, it's, it's your land, right? And you have the right to go out there and do whatever you want in this land. I mean, granted, not like everything, but you can do almost anything in this land. And, and it's all throughout the country. Every state, you know, has like different nuggets where you can just go and discover new things. Like here in Iowa, you know, we, we went and we went to Ledges State Park and we went to, you know, that bison reserve with some elk. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I think that's the best part. What are your thoughts on the 50 year plan? So again, my answer applies for, you know, kind of like being a nomad, you know, just going off and being able to, to uproot your life and go all over the place. I mean, it's the same answer. It's just, it sounds like a dream. It sounds incredible, you know, it sounds like the definition of awesome, right? You're, you're able to go around and enter these people's lives and affect them in a positive way, you know, become an integral part of their, like, well-being almost, right? Because it's, there's nothing, there's nothing negative about it. It's just, it's pure positive. I mean, it sounds like such a hippie thing. It's like pure positive and good vibes, but it is, it is. It's, it's yeah, it's so cool that you're doing that. I wish, I wish that everybody would do that. I wish that it would be more like that than the military, that people would sign up for like a four year stint and just like, hey, you know what? Like, it's your time. You got four, four years here. You got, you have to choose four states, you know, and just go live in these states and, and live with a random family and help them out. Public service. Public service, uh -huh. right? Like, why isn't it something like that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that, you know, because you're walking away with all these great life experiences and helping somebody that, you know, sounds like they, they need it, you know, or they can at the very least use it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, ask me more about it if you want. <laughs>